M.O. Walker put on Christ, so in Christ may Billy be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves, just as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live, and those who believe in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you also shall live. Friends, so many in this room who were privileged to call Billy friends, a testimony to a life well lived this morning. We have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Billy Walker. We come together in grief acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. Let us pray. O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace, that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in you. For nothing in life will be able to separate us from your great love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now let us stand together and proclaim our resurrection faith through the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I invite you to continue standing to sing our opening hymn, Morning Has Broken, as printed in the handout in your bulletin.
Please be seated. Hear now the words of encouragement from the psalmist. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake at, with their surging. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, remind me how you're related to Billy and Janet Walker, your cousins, right? It's a question I get asked quite often. The simple answer is no, we are not related. But as in life, the simple answer does not always give the whole story. I like to joke that my family tree doesn't have a lot of width to it. Three sisters marrying three brothers doesn't make for a family tree with a lot of branches. Fortunately for me and my people, ours is firmly planted next to the Butler Walker Lewis family tree. <laughs> Branches so intertwined for so long and so tightly that you can hardly tell where one starts and the other stops. What this means is that I have never known a life without Billy Walker. Every childhood memory is wrapped firmly in the embrace of his love and kindness. More than that, uh, Billy, like for so many of you, sang the soundtrack of my life. As a baby, his lullabies whisked me off to a dream world. He did funny voices for cartoons projected on the wall throughout our childhood. My adult life is dotted with chairman performances and civic club shows and Christmas Eve services here at Mulberry. Billy Walker sang the song of all our lives. Billy also gave me the one nickname that has stuck with me. <laughs> every Christmas and birthday card, every greeting hello and goodbye, every text and voicemail and that Irish accent, he called me Katie Scarlett. He always made me feel special, quick with a smile and a hug, easy to talk to, and always eager to really hear you. Billy Walker was more than just a second father to me. He was a true and loyal encourager as he was to so many of you. He had a way of making every person in the room feel important and special. My heart is a little quieter today. But even in the quiet, there is hope. An echo of songs well sung hangs in the air. Sadness for a loss of someone so loved by an entire community is hard to look past. But look past it, we must. The scripture assures us that God can be the refuge and strength we need in times of trouble. And Billy Walker would want that. He deserves to have all the love and joy that he gave to us reflected back out into the world. As with so many hard things, the children usually tell us what to do. The littlest Lewis gave us just the right way to think about our grief. Janet's father, Melson Butler, and now Billy are not really gone. They are right here in our hearts. And we can kiss Paul. Paul and grander any time we want. She's right. They are not gone. They are not far from us. 
I will see Billy's exact same smile reflected in his mother and sisters. I will hear his humor and songs and the beautiful voices of his children. I will hear his laughter and his grandchildren's giggles. <laughs> I will see his care and concern for his family reflected in his daughter and son-in-law. Most of all, I will see his love radiate forever out of the heart of our dear JB. Theirs is a love for the ages, one that we all hope to find. Billy will live on in everyone that he touched and everyone that he loved. I'm a better human because of Billy. Now remind me how you're related to Billy and Janet. They are all my family. And I'm the head of a very long line of the Billy Walker fan club. Look out, Miss Lottie Linya and old Lucy Brown. Yes, that line, that long line of Billy's fans forms on the right, babe. Now that Mackie's back in town. <laughs> Look out, oh, Mackie's back. Amen. Please listen to these words of Scripture. Uh, first reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain." And these uh, immortal words of Jesus, Matthew's fifth chapter. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hey, brother man. Love you, brother man. You will not find the word brother man in Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> but it should be there, and if it was, this would be the definition, quote, a greeting spoke by Billy Walker <laughs> to convey kindness, love, and respect to dignify and elevate human relationships, end quote. 
I'm sure Jesus said, brother man. I don't know how the apostles missed it. And Billy, always with love, used it to address many of us. Who, oh, brother man? Who, oh, brother man? I know God has wrapped his loving arms around Billy. I know that. But I hear my heart saying, Oh, brother man, oh, brother man, where art thou? In that breathtaking 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians where Paul lays out the meaning of the resurrection, he rhetorically asks, O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? I know how Paul wants me to answer that question. Paul wants me to say Christ takes away the sting of death, but I'm not quite there yet. Where, O oh death, is thy sting? I'll tell you where it is. It's right here. It's right out there. And that sting, it's, it ain't no baby mosquito nibble. That sting is the direct hit of one of those angry, ferocious yellow jackets that Billy from time to time would kick up in his backyard or at the little brown house. George Herbert contemporary of John Wesley captured a deep sense of anguish in his poem entitled Grief. In a few verses, Herbert wrestles with the inadequacy of language in the face of grief. An inadequacy I have felt keenly during Billy's dying. Stripped of all vocabulary, Herbert concludes the poem with these three words. Alas, my God, I've been sighing those words for months now, and so have you. Here's one accolade written about Billy from the hundreds that he and Janet have received. I selected this one only because it captures Billy so succinctly. His friend writes, I've never known a kinder, more selfless, and magnanimous person than Billy Walker. Don't you agree? The Beatitudes spoken by Jesus point towards Billy. That smile, that laugh, that sincerity. There was no guile in this man. He said to me, and I believe it, I never tried to intentionally hurt anyone. Oh, there was mis mischievousness in Billy. <laughs> there was playfulness. There, there was a little bit of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn in him. I've been watching this last week, Billy's Civic Club performances, and they've been great. But what I wanted to see, I told Trevor this morning and couldn't find, I want to see some of Billy's crazy beds and bedding advertisements. <laughs> yeah. Where did that sweetness come from? Where did that goodness that, that made him the finest friend, a successful businessman, a, a loving pawpaw, an incredible father and father-in-law, a loving brother and devoted husband? Maxie, did it come from you and, and Bill? Dixie, Pam, Tina, did, did this unique set of gifts come from having three sisters? Did it come from Janet, that storybook marriage that you and Billy had better than any love story, real or imagined, that I've ever known? You were the perfect mate from the day you both were smitten with each other. I've never known a more joyful, well-matched couple. It always felt like you were fresh newlyweds. Where does one find such a rare set of gifts? During the dozen years I served as pastor here, Billy Walker chaired and served on every key position in this congregation, some of them long and involved like the building committee and some of them 
quite stressful and sometimes made more stressful because of the senior pastor. I called on Billy far too often. He was such an incredible man of faith. He never let me down. He never let this church down. He never let the Lord down. Over these past four months, I visited Billy frequently. I wasn't sure whether I was visiting as pastor or friend. I heard him ask the humble question I had dreaded to hear, will you preach my funeral? Over those months, Billy and I talked about whatever, Smilax, Bluebirds, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Bo, Rachel, his beloved grandchildren. But there were deeper moments, too. Billy told me, I've always looked at things and asked, how can I fix them? And he did. And he did, and I'm not just talking about handyman stuff. He fixed relationships. He even tried to fix the Houston oncologist who broke the bad news to Billy. When that doctor had finished speaking, the empathetic Billy replied, it must have been hard for you to have had to share that news with me. Who can speak like that at a time like that? Billy faced his diagnosis head on. When they told him to go home, there was no treatment. Spend time with his family, he resolved then and there to man up, as he said it. And he did. He fell from time to time, but I heard him say more than once, uh, for months I scolded Melson to use the walker, and now I'm trying to follow my own advice. He lived with that ugly cancer, with characteristic Billy humor mixed in with his determination. It was not false bravado, it was Billy. One day we discussed relationships. Here's what Billy said about life. The only thing that matters is love. Everything else is frou-frou. When you strip away everything else, all that's left is just to love one another. And when Billy and Janet and family received this diagnosis, Billy began receiving letters and emails, notes and personal expressions sent by you and others. It was more than a little humbling and overwhelming to receive those words and for Billy to receive all of the things that you had to say. And what Billy and Janet both said to me about that humbling experience was, we've got to learn to share love with each other right now. We dare not wait until we hear somebody is sick or dying. We dare not hold back. Let's be extravagant with each other now, today. Don't put it off one more day. You can say it again tomorrow. Let me turn to Billy's voice. I suspect we will hear about Mac the Knife at, and those pearly whites at least once more, perhaps, during this service. But not only could Billy sing everything from Bobby Darren to Elton John to Billy Joel to, yes, Jerry Garcia, Billy could sing the great hymns of the church as well. We don't have a soloist today, but I ask that microphone stand to be placed there. 
because Billy not only took the stage across the street at the annual Civic Club show, he offered himself to God in this sanctuary week after week in the Ainsworth Choir and regularly as a soloist. With Cam on the organ and Billy at that microphone, you knew it was going to be awesome. Billy would sing, Be Thou My Vision. We knew that every Advent or perhaps Christmas Eve, he would sing, I wonder as I wander. I can see him now. He would step to that microphone. He would acknowledge that congregation with that confident, sincere expression. And then he would sing those sacred holy words with sweet, compelling clarity. When the solo was over, he would gently close his choir folder, take one step back from the microphone, gracefully turn and walk away his sweet voice still lilting in this sanctuary. That's how I'm going to remember Billy Walker today. For 65 years, he confidently stepped to life's microphone. He offered his very best to God and to us with his heart, his soul, and his voice. Now he's taken a step back from that microphone. He's gracefully turned and stepped into the arms of God. But his loving witness and that sweet voice still fills our hearts. Yes, the line forms on the right, dears. Love you. Love you, brother man. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of life and conqueror of death, our help in every time of trouble, we trust that you do not willingly grieve or afflict us. Comfort us who mourn and give us grace in the presence of death to worship you that we may have sure hope of eternal life and be enabled to put our whole trust in your mercy. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you are still God. We pray to you for one another in all our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave William Walker to us, so now we give Billy back to you. Receive Billy into the arms of your mercy. Raise Billy up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day. We praise you for home and friends and for our baptism and place in your church. Above all, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our grief, who died our death, 
and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. Now hear us as we come to you, praying as our resurrected Savior taught the disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand and join in singing our closing hymn, which is printed on the reverse of the insert in your bulletin. Fellowship, the Fellowship Hall can be accessed by either of these doors from this microphone stand. Receive the benediction. Brothers and sisters, you are salt. You are light. Go out into this world and love others. Do so in the name of Jesus, so that on your last day, you might hear these words, 
You have been faithful over little. Uh, now I will set you over much. Oh, brother man, oh, sister man, enter into sister man? Enter into the joy of your master. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.